Hi, my name is Doug Rutter. I'm the president of RCS Sports Incorporated, the owner of The Collective and The E-Museum. So this is a, a bottle of champagne that came from uh, Michael Jordan's uh, flight school that he has over in Vegas every summer. He still does it. And uh, this is a 2006 vintage, which was his 10th year of doing the camp. He gave the bottle to Coach Haskins and uh, it, uh, it, it came to be in, uh, in my collection. I really like it. Coach, Coach Haskins is one of them. Um, Doug Rudder, oh. best friend, because we, uh, we get a chance to go out to eat three or four times a month. A month? Yeah. Do you realize it's gotten a Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's fun to be with him. It's fun for him to, every once in a while he gets crazy and teases me about something. Uh, third person would be Heather Wilson because she gave me the Distinguished Alumni Award, which I keep at home. Um, Is that the top of the chart for you? Uh, yeah. Is that as good as it gets? Yeah, yeah, that's as good as it gets. She was... Uh, should they, any UTEP minor should want to be that. Well, they're not, and there's only there's only one or two, uh, this year we had two, but there's one or two that uh, the president selects, and obviously... Every year? Every year. Uh, so, obviously, Diana and Alicia was not a good person to yeah. me to give me that award. Uh, I really, I'm trying to think of two other people, but I, I can't. Yeah, well, yeah. you got Coach in there. Yeah, Heather Wilson got you. Um, so, a couple of things I want to talk to you about that are some of my favorite stories of yours would be um, uh, the Jeep Jackson thing and just how accommodating you were to that whole situation. I know the story, but, but most people probably don't. Are you comfortable sharing a little bit of it? Sure. Tell me what yeah. happened on that day. Well, that was a, a May, it was a day of uh, Kentucky Derby race, and David Binder was had gone to the track. And who's David Binder? David Binder was the uh, trainer for the team. He was extremely close with Coach and extremely close with Jeep and all, all the players. And uh, his wife uh, couldn't find him, so she called me and told me that there was something wrong with Jeep and he was at, uh, he, was a, he was supposed to be at Beaumont. So we walked in and uh, just as we walked in, the double doors opened and there's two doctors and they said, we lost him. And I, the first person I called was uh, David Wilbanks, because he was very close with, with Jeep. David Wilbanks called Jeep's mom from there and told her that Jeep had passed. And that was, I mean, that was very special to me because I love Jeep. Um, this was a Saturday, so the Thursday, he was with his girlfriend at Jackson's and I bought them dinner. He was graduated, he was done, so that made it easier to to be able to buy him dinner. He was a great guy. And it wasn't, he didn't die from the supposed uh, accuse him of taking cocaine and it wasn't true. His problem was he was his heart was bigger than what his body was. I mean, he had a very large heart. And uh, we, after he died, we had a kind of a reunion with his parents, and uh, it was at the special event center. And I remember everybody saying, "Jeep, Jeep, Jeep," calling his name out. It was to me. Bobby Joe Hill dying and going to the to the funeral and being in the funeral was more touching, but 
with Jeep. I cried. I cried. So that's really all that happened. But he didn't die of taking cocaine. He died of his enlarged heart. Wow. Well, thanks for sharing that. Every every year I decide I'm going to give it to David Wilbanks, and I never do. I gave mine to... Um, I gave the travel uniform, shorts and, pant and uh, shirts. I gave them to Mrs. Jackson when she came this last time. I bet she was happy. She was very happy. And I didn't have any more need for it. Right. So uh, I never had uh, our Rudy frame it up because I, I just wanted it there and knew that one day I'd give it to the family. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about over over your involvement with the team. Most people don't realize that you're an honorary member of the team. Yes. How did that come to be? Uh, when we were in Houston for the 50th anniversary, uh, after the game was over, after the halftime presentation, uh, they gave me the plaque and a certificate naming me a member, honorary member of the team. And I was very happy uh, because to be uh, any kind of attachment to that team was a glorious and unexpected gift. Are you the only one? No. There's other honoraries? There's one more. Is there one more? Do I know him? No, her. Her? Diana and Alicia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And why that one, I don't understand. Yeah. She, and she wasn't a fan of athletics. No, not most at all. Pe most people don't realize that. No, and she wasn't a fan of the 60-60. She only did it when it was going to be pleasant or something good's going to happen. Now, did she go to Washington with y'all? Uh, no, she didn't. wonder why. I don't know why, but she didn't go. So how far in advance did you guys get notice of that? And was the, oh. mo and was the movie already out? Yeah, the movie was out uh, about a month. and uh, About a month the movie was out? The movie was out on February 13th, 2006. And this was February 22nd, 2006. And uh, it was out. And uh, in fact, Bush had a private showing of the movie with Mary Haskins and the team players and they saw the movie again. Were you there? I wasn't in at the movie. I wasn't I wasn't invited to go to the movie. But I knew what was going on. Is the White House just beyond comprehension? Beyond comprehension, especially the way that uh, Bush and Laura fixed the whole thing. Um, what do you mean? Well, it was Everybody, husbands were at one table, wives were at another table. And I was at the table next to Bush and Adair Margo, and uh, Maynard had it. Good for Maynard. <laughs> I can't see him dressed up. He had a coat and tie on, and uh, Bush said, uh, I got to go. He did, a, he did a toast, and then he said, I got to go because I'm in bed at 9 o'clock. And uh, Maynard got up and said, I'd like to give you a hug. And he said, no, I don't think the guys over here are going to like it, talking about the security people. And uh, he had a <laughs> Are they everywhere, the security people? Yeah, they were near the doors, yeah. But anyway, Maynard said, uh, fuck them. Yeah? And we didn't even give him a hug. Is that right? Yeah. Was, was Bush taken aback by it, or? Oh, yeah, he was, I mean, he was on his way to to, to go to sleep. But he said that after. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, that was great. Yeah, and then so what uh, What else did y'all do? Well, he asked for my, um, he asked to dare to get my uh, menu card, and he signed it. Uh, thank you, George Bush. And that was really special because he didn't do that for anybody else. Wow. So you still have it, obviously. Oh, yeah, I have it framed and everything. Is that one of your babies? Yeah. Yeah. It should be. Yeah. It should be one of your babies.
Yeah. Especially if you know the story behind it and how it went about. Yeah. So. So what else did you all do there? What part of the White House were you in? We were in the um, the estate where they have the estate dinners. So we were at, and uh, they had uh, he had a group from the uh, Air Force Academy of the Air Force that came in and sang all the songs from the movie. Oh wow! And that was touching because that was that was really special. Wow! So who was there that's not with us anymore? Harry Flournoy. That's it, huh? Orson artist. Orson, yeah. So that made it kind of sad. You had a relationship with Orson, didn't you? Him and Harry, very tight relationship with them. Yeah. Very tight. And I think it was because of the reunions and... Uh, well, that's what I want to get to. I mean, you were responsible for watches, rings, yeah. coins. I've seen all kinds of stuff that you did for yeah. the team. Well, the first one was the 1986... Uh, reunion. Um, 20 year. 20 year reunion. And I had talked to Coach and asked him if I could do it. He's, first he said no. And I said, well, the athletic director said no to. He didn't want me raising money. So he, he gave me the okay and I just went forward and got John Silverman and Henry Silverman to donate the rings. And uh, we had Every team member was there that day. All and, of them? Yeah, all of them. Um, they were each escorted by the, uh, the gold digger. What's the guy's name that, that doesn't participate in any of this? Uh, David Palacio, yeah. he participated in the 20th and 25th. He did? Yeah. That's nice, I'm yeah. glad he did. Yeah, after the 25th, he didn't participate anymore and he won't talk to anybody on the phone about it. He gets copies of everything that Steve Tredenek comes up with, but he doesn't participate. What does Steve come up with? I'm sorry? What does Steve come up with, Tredenek? Well, he was representing Coach, the way it started, he was representing Coach on dealing with Disney and the movie. And then once he did that, then he was asked to stay on by Coach to represent the players. And uh, he complained a little bit to Coach and said, you know, this is getting to be a full-time job. I need to get some money. So Coach asked the players for some money. The white guys were the only ones that that donated. Wow. And they said, the uh, African-Americans said, was he done for us? Jerry Armstrong was another one that's passed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what they said about Coach, what has he done for us? No, he said, he, he told Coach, they told Coach, what has he done for us? Who? Talking about the seven black guys. Yeah, but what, is, what did who do for who? No, Coach wanted them to give some money to right. give to Steve. Oh, and they said, what has Steve done for us? Yeah. Is what so, they were saying. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't, they didn't give you money. Wow, were you surprised? Yes, I'd expected they'd give something, but they didn't. Yeah. You know, and then you go back to those guys, and I know Cager was drafted by the Baltimore Bullets. I learned last night that Neville Shedd was drafted by the Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics, yeah. Um, David Latin was dra drafted, he played in the ABA for Memphis, and he played in the NBA for Phoenix. Yeah. Um, None of the other guys went any further, is that right? Or am I That's wrong? That's right. Yeah. The only other one that could have gone, but he didn't want to go because he was being told not to go would have been Bobby Joe Hill. Wonder why. He got he had a very bad relationship with his mother in law. And she said, You need to quit doing this stuff. Really? And don't play. Well he didn't care. So yeah. Is he your favorite? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. yeah? What makes it that way? Well, we were close together. I mean, and I mean close. We had lunch together, we'd have breakfast together, we visit together. Uh, Did you ever go to Juarez with him? No. 
<laughs> no, no, we didn't. Yeah, he likes that. He used to like oh, it. Oh, he, he got the job at the uh, gas company. I he, worked with him. He was standing on a street corner or something, and uh, Joe Foster got him hooked up with the, uh, the gas yeah. company. He worked there till he died, no? Yeah, yeah. He retired and then... How about the turnout for that funeral? Oh, that was incredible. We had it at the chapel in, uh, on Fort Bliss, and uh, it was absolutely incredible. It was packed. Nolan Richardson and I did the eulogies, and uh, Coach Atkins in the front row, Mary was with him, uh, Tina and the daughter, Michelle, uh, Bobby Joe's kid, and uh, it, there was no place to open in the, in the church. I mean, it was packed. And then we went on to take the body to that one, what is the name of that? Uh, on on uh, Dyer Street. It's not Mount Carmel, is it? No. Is it Evergreen? Evergreen. Evergreen, yeah. That's where he was. He was buried, and for a while they didn't have a, a marker on his grave because they're afraid people would, you know, would take it. Yeah. So that was an amazing time. Yeah. And Coach has a marker. He's out in Santa Teresa. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what Beto does? Puts flowers on it. He puts tequila. Oh, yeah. He puts tequila in it. Yeah. Yeah. Regularly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Beto and Coach had a very close relationship and, you know, Coach had a group of friends and those are the people that he, after every game, there was a uh, an RV on the very end of the parking lot across from the tunnel and he would go there and talk and BS and drink tequila. And. Uh, he loved drinking tequila. Yeah. No, oh, he loved it. Those little bottles you get at Billy's. Oh, yeah. Those were his deal. Yeah. Look, <coughs> excuse me, well, he did that after the, the last time they busted him. Yeah. For an open container. He decided that those, he could drink that and throw it in the back and it wouldn't be Yeah, he threw them through the back window. Yeah. <laughs> would be an open container. Yeah. He was a very special guy, and I and I miss him. And I, I think a lot of people in El Paso miss him, not only for his coaching, but he was quietly a very special guy. Do you remember when he took the job in Detroit? Yeah. For one day? Yeah. Right? Yep. One day. Basketball coach. Yep. He thought about it and decided that he would come back. Now, that opened up the door for Dick Vitale, and Dick Vitale got his start there. Is that right? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, and he he made it there. So, Coach was kind of a, he, he really didn't like all the lights and the... No, he didn't. He really wanted to just sit back. And we haven't had anybody since like him. I've tried to talk to Beto before about his relationship with Coach, and he just refuses to talk about it. But I know they were very close. Very close. I mean, daily close. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Beto was an excellent guy for him, and he and Beto really did the '66 line for Coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, his store had T-shirts and sweatshirts. And Remember all that at the flower oh, shop? Oh yeah, yeah, it was all at the flower shop. So, but he, Coach, really liked him, and uh, he's a character. Oh yeah. I would love to see him again. Oh, we will. Yeah. What else? What's your favorite piece of memorabilia? And I know you're downsizing and some of your memorabilia is going to the school, some of it's being sold. What's your piece de resistance? Probably the copy of the ring that I, uh, I loaned to Utah. The 66 championship ring? Yeah. yeah. The one from the 20th? Yes. Yeah. And you know, I lost the other one because somebody uh, took it out of the box that I had it in. And that 
the watch, the Sunball watch, two NCAA watches, and an NIT watch that coach had given me. All together? All gone. Really? All gone, yeah. That really... Uh, How long have they been gone, do you think? Been gone about four weeks. Wow. Yeah. That's terrible. I'm, I'm looking through the film that I had in the garage to see if I see somebody that was, was leaning in. Um, so we'll see. Very good. Well, the next year, I um, I worked with uh, Brad Hobius, who was a heck of a lot nicer about doing stuff for the team. And we, then who? Then Bill Cords. Yeah. Bill Cords was awful. And uh, I didn't have any issues with uh, Brad Hobius, and he let me give him some watches I had made for each one of them. The next time I did watches was for the 50th anniversary. And I think you've seen that watch, it's a yeah. beautiful watch. Yeah, I have one. Uh, and uh, that was that was the special watch, because it's a very special watch. Uh, and really, that's, that's the only thing I ever gave them. I mean, you know, we had the 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th. 50th was the most memorable because I pushed the cart, I pushed the Orson artist in his wheelchair and uh, first we stopped to wait and we had the North Carolina team uh, fans there, the kids that put it at the end and uh, he was signing stuff and uh, he told he told one of those kids, he said, just remember I'm the first 23. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, we, we pushed him to the center court and it made me feel, we just pushed the wheelchair and stepped back. Uh, not important, but it made me feel very special. Included. Yeah, that was a very special moment in my life. And the, uh, all the, the two guys that were standing through the whole process was Bill Walton and Jay Billis. And I'll never forget it. They were very special guys and they really respected the fact that they were on the court. Wow. So. Good for Walton. Yeah, well, Walton was great. Did he talk to the team? He, he talked to the team. At the, the next day they had, the, they had a private breakfast and it was Bill Walton and everybody tied in with CBS. They had a private breakfast for them, just the players. So, who were the assistants when they won? Uh, Iva, Mo Iva. He's the son of Henry Iva. Right. Ross Moore, who was really the, <laughs> the trainer, and he was always. I mean, sometimes the coach get a technical, and it wasn't him. It was. It was what Paul was, uh, what he was saying to the referees. Yeah. So. On the movie, one to 10, how did it turn out for you as being somebody that had been there for all of it? How much of it was truth and how much of it was fantasy? Well, there was a lot of melodramatic stuff. I mean, Shed didn't get beat up in the bathroom. Uh, so I think the movie for me was not a 10, but it was six or seven. Yeah. Too, mi too much melodramatic. Yeah, the blood writing on the walls yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. That was... You like the gas station attendant? Oh, I love the gas station Wasn't attendant. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> Coach said that if, I think he got paid with 600 bucks, and he said, if I'd have known, I would have... <laughs> I would have played it up so I could get more money. <laughs> so... He was very special in that, and and really that's the only time he had anything to do with the movie. Yeah. And he just stepped aside and let it. Did he go to the premiere? No. The premiere was over here, right? Well, yeah, we had a private one for just yeah, the private one at the Cinema Park West, and that he went to. Uh, but he didn't go to the official one that was at Alamo. What was it? it wasn't Al as Alamo here, but over there was. Uh, Tinseltown. Tinseltown. 
you know, just like Bobby Leslie, my coach, you know, when we won, Bobby didn't go to anything. Never. Not even the night they named the gym after him. He didn't even show up for that. So, That's do you remember when he was uh, uh, signed? You know, Leslie was his first recruit. Right. Right? Right. They tell me that when he came to the university, he didn't have shoes. He was barefoot. You think that's folklore? No, I think I think it's probably true. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things the coach did for a lot of people. He and, did. Uh, the players, he took good care of the players, even though he was tough on them. Do you remember Bobby playing? No. 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 That too much too for, early for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was probably 62. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he could shoot the eyes out of it. I'll tell you that much. Didn't watch. <laughs> so, anyway, that's really uh really all I've got. Okay. You did a good job. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. telling us. Thank you for recording it and put it back in again. Yeah. I was uh, a little little nervous and I was not quite as enthusiastic when we did the When other. we did the podcast? Yeah. We'll merge them together or something. Did, uh, did you get uh, Neville? Yeah. Wednesday night. He's great. Yeah, he's great. And, uh, he was very nice to me on the and phone. And he can talk. I mean, he can really talk. And really? He's got, oh yeah, he's got the great stories of what happened in Seattle. And he was the last one to leave the hotel. He was covered. He was sitting there getting ready to go. Got all perfumed up, and he heard the footsteps, and he heard Coach Iba, Coach Haskins, Coach Haskins opened the door to his room. And Neville had gotten in bed and put the covers over him, and he said, "Why are you the only one that's that's here, and everybody else is gone?" And he just pretended to be kind of crying and said, "Coach, that loss really affected me, and I couldn't get out." <laughs> <laughs> and he may tell you the story. I don't know. He's a he's a good speaker. Yeah, he was very kind. Yeah. That's it. Anything else? No, I think that's it. All right, bud. Okay. I expect to hear about the pillow. I will. <laughs> I'll try it tonight. Okay. See you later. See you later. Bye, Thank bud. You. Thank you again. Thank you. There was a, our, an art professor at the El Paso Community College by the name of Philip Beheimer. And Philip Beheimer was the guy that was uh, asked by Adair Marco to paint the picture of Coach Haskins. And everything he did was four feet by six feet. And your face was amazingly done. And he did an incredible job of, he's one of these guys that can grab a stencil and, and do a picture of you that you will not, you will not like it because he, he puts everything into it. Uh, I got that picture and uh, the painting? The painting, I'm sorry, the painting from um, Adair Margo. And uh, I've got it on loan at UTEP, second floor of the Haskins Center. And there's where it sits. Up high. Up high, yeah. And it's got, my name was bigger, but uh, that was changed. Yeah. So. Should I guess by who? You might be able to guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it'll be there forever. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was planning on, <clears throat> on doing a loan agreement or giving it to UTEP, really, that's what it was. But the way that the thing is written up, it doesn't specify that it's going to stay there. So I decided not to sign it. Yeah. So, so the question that all the girls want to know is how you got to be locker number one at Billy Cruz. <laughs> and you're still locker number one at Billy Cruz. Well, I came up with that idea of doing the, the lockers and Billy had them built. And, uh, what are the lockers for? Put your wine. And uh, I told Billy, I said, I want to be the, the number one guy and I want to run it and charge $50 a year and let it cover the construction. And uh, we had some, we had a few bottles in there, 
And then it turned out, when I asked for a bottle, it turned out to be the same price as the, it's on the, the thick book. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, I decided not to do it. And I yeah. told him, and he's left my name on there. Yeah, you're still number one. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta be number one somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. That's thank, it. Thank you guys. I appreciate it.